Hello everybody, Mr. Moo here in the cockpit, here in Elite Dangerous. Uh, a few people have asked about it, and I guess I'll give a quick rundown. <sighs> so, you want to be in power play. Okay. What is power play? Power play is a kind of a sub-game in the background simulation where you can pledge yourself to some political entity, some power, ranging from pirate lords to cult leaders to captains of industry to space Stalin to weekend T-1000 cosplayers to... I'm sure the Alliance has some kind of influence somewhere. Okay, that's unfair. He's actually listed at number one right now in terms of power, so... Obviously, the Alliance is doing something right. But, this isn't going to be uh, any major overview. This is just kind of going to be all over the place. My thoughts on just about everybody, so... Strap in, no information, just me rambling along. Let's start with Archon Delane. Pirate Lord. Pirate Lord... Anarchist who wants all of his people to perform more paperwork. No, really. He's the anarchist who wants more bureaucracy. It doesn't make sense to me either. Just just roll with it. So, okay, power play. Let's uh, get some, some of the basics out of the way first. You've got, at your ratings here, power commodities. At rating 1, you get 10 power commodities every half hour. What are power commodities? They are things that the power wants you to ship from point A to point B. Usually you got to fly all the way back to the headquarters system and then fly out to wherever you want this uh, commodity to go for reinforcing the power or prepping them for expansion or whatever. Problem is, they cost 10,000 credits per commodity after the first, uh, you know, the first hit's free. After that, it costs. Say you got a ship with 30 tons of cargo space, and you want to fill it up with 30 power commodities? Makes sense. You're going to get the first 10 for free at rating 1. Then you're going to pay 100,000 credits for the next 10. Then you're going to pay another 100,000 credits for the next 10. So you've just spent 200,000 credits to haul their stuff. You're paying for the privilege of hauling their crap around. Once you get it dropped off to wherever you want, or well, wherever they want it dropped off, you get 30,000 credits back. So all said and told, you have paid 170,000 credits for them to give you 30 cents back. We... Okay, say you've uh, moved a hundred merits, or a hundred of these commodity vouchers. Every commodity gives you a merit. Now, there are other ways to get merits. You can get it through piracy, you can get it through other piracy, interdiction, combat zones. Um, basically, it boils down to piracy, 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 or mercenary piracy. Or just hauling the stuff. It... Ah, where do I go with this? Say you unlock 100 merits within a week. This has all got to be on a weekly basis. If you get 100 merits, you're at rating 2. The next week, those 100 merits disappear and you drop back down to rating 1. So they keep you going here in the salt mines. If you have 300 merits, congratulations, you are safe for three weeks without having to ship any crap around for them. Because you lose, you know, at rating two, you lose 100 merits a week, just to maintain your level of, uh, your rating level. If you're at 750 merits, all 750 merits crash to zero, and you're back to rating one. If you have 850 merits, you've got 100 left, and it drops you back to rating two. For a week. Yes, you can see where this goes. Every power also has specific weaponry. Some of these I've tried, some of these I haven't. The Cyto Scrambler. It's a burst laser that's really good against shields and does no hull damage. It's a fixed burst laser, by the way, and I 
Can't remember the rating on it. It's either class one or class two. Either way, congratulations. You've got a gun that does nothing to a person who you've just shot at. Um, okay. You know what else is really effective against shields? Laser lasers. And you don't need to be a... You don't need to be pledged to a power for a month to get it. Good for thought. Yzma. Uh, I mean, Zemina Torval. Older than dirt, meaner than hell. She gives you a mining laser which can do damage against other ships like it's a combat laser. Problem is, in my opinion, again, no combat ready ship is going to be worth a damn at mining. And no good mining ship is going to be worth a damn in combat. So, congratulations, you've solved a problem that uh, wasn't really there to begin with. Space Stalin, Yuri Grom, loves gold. A uh, player, a player-created faction that... No, seriously, you take the beard off and it's Stalin. Anyway, player faction created this guy. And through the dangerous games and whatever, he they managed to elevate themselves to the point where they are a power play power and get to be dismissed by uh, most of the player base like every other bit of power play. They won. What do you get out of him? You get a containment missile. It's a dumb fire missile that'll disrupt and reboot a target vessel's frameshift drive. Kind of neat. You know, if it weren't for anti-missile systems and dodging... You know, things. Lee Young Ri. Pretty good looking for 125. The miracles of technology when you're richer than God and own the biggest corporation in the uh, in the known galaxy. So this guy gives you the Packhound missile rack, which is basically the Macross salvo. They're neat. They can over um oh they can. They can make a lot of missile impacts just because they overwhelm an anti-missile system. But they're a little... I don't know. They're, they're fun to look at. I haven't found the real... the most practical use for them yet. Own Sirius Corp. He was previously... well, now he's in charge of Sirius Gov, which is their corporate governance arm. Ah... Uh. Everything's for sale in the future. Okay, Admiral Senator Denton Patrius, the galaxy's sleaziest payday loan lender. No, really. So this guy's uh, modus operandi before he became the commanding admiral of the Empire. I think that's his position right now. Anyway, he would arrange for quote-unquote pirate attacks on non-aligned systems. And then come in and offer planetary defense networks, weapon satellites, etc., etc. You'd buy from him, or you'd lease them at very fair rates, and then, invoking the fine print, the kind of fine print that you need a scanning electron microscope for, he would crank the interest rates up through high orbit. And then, if you couldn't pay, he'd uh, use suborned back backdoor codes to turn all that planetary uh, defense hardware into planetary siege platforms. And then he would basically say, how many more craters would you like in the surface of your planet before you uh, pledge fealty to me or pay up? He gives the Advanced Plasma Accelerator, which, again, is nice. It's a rapid-fire Class Three plasma cannon. But with engineering now, you could uh, rapid-fire a standard plasma cannon and not have to, you know, not have to be in the employ of this tool for a month. Rena Vantal. Um, Utopian Movement believes in, if I remember his background right up properly, he believes in, he is the Sim Guru. His full title is Sim Guru Pranav Antal. He believes that using um, total VR simulation will be able to share experiences f between people and cause total understanding and total utopian paradise. If you don't believe in that, he will send mercenaries after you to blow your ass up. 
bit of a cult leader. Uh, he gives you the Enforcer Cannon, which is a fixed class one small multi cannon, which does pack a hell of a punch. I believe it punches like right around the uh, area of a class two standard multi cannon. So it's good for things like eagles or asp explorers where you just want to, you know, throw a whole lot of lead down range. Also might be good for, um, well, it's not that great for larger ships like, you know, the, the Anaconda and the Federal Corvette, which have class one hard points. Grumble. But, you know, I was going to say you could try to use those there, but those things don't really move and maneuver well enough to be using small fix multi-cannons. Zachary Hudson, T-1000 cosplayer on the side, president of the Federation, uh, had about enough charm that he nearly came in second place on a ballot where he was the only name. Uh, became president of the Federation through the fact that his predecessor had the unfortunate experience of being blowed up. She got better, though. Arguably. He gives you the past fire frag cannon. Basically, they put a choke on the shotgun, so it's got a tighter pattern out to a longer distance. Felicia Winters. Not a horrible person. Best I can say. Um, yeah, she's actually seeming a, a, a decent sort. She gives you the Pulse Disruptor, which is a medium pulse weapon fixed pulse laser that causes module malfunctions. Decent, but again, engineering, you could engineer um, Scramble Spectrum, I believe that's the type, and then you would have a gimbaled pulse or burst laser of any size you want that will also cause random module malfunctions. Aisling Duval. Anybody here read Battletech? 31st century Catherine Steiner. Not Katrina, Catherine. Um, calls herself the People's Princess, very much, um, you know, against slavery, very much against, um, well, I hate narcotics, and I think they should be made illegal. My mother died from them before I was old enough to remember her. So, very, she's, she's very, okay, I'm gonna get space diabetes just listening to her talk half the time. You know, when she isn't actually going through social events, which are thinly disguised subliminal mind control experiments. Look it up. Painite visors, uh, sound and light shows to invoke emotion and certain feelings. Yeah, mind control. Anyway. She gives you the prismatic shield generator. Not horrible. It's a shield generator which punches way above its weight class. Um, it's, it basically turns a class three into a class four, a class four into a class five, et cetera, et cetera. Downside, it uses up a whole lot more power than a, uh, regular shield generator of the same class, weighs a lot more, and takes forever and a day to recharge. On the other hand, if you're hauling cargo and you just want a whole lot of megajoules in between you and the guy shooting you, eh, there, there are worse things you could do. Arissa Lavigny Duval, current emperor, not empress, emperor. Um, she is the emperor, the previous emperor's illegitimate daughter. She was going to be legitimized, except then the uh, emperor ended up going into a coma for a few months, and then they found out that was poison. He recovered, said he was going to marry his mistress and legitimize her birthright. Starts making his way down the aisle and then ends up knifed a few times. And it's really, really hard to finish your vows with all the screaming and the blood and the... Yeah, anyway. Regardless, the Senate legitimized her claim and declared her the Emperor. Her weapon's interesting. It's the uh, Imperial Hammer. It's a medium burst-fire railgun. Fires three rail pulses... None as powerful as a standard railgun round, but all three of them together can hit harder than a regular railgun. Uses up more power, generates more heat. Standard song and dance. 
Edmund Mahone, or Mahon, or Mahoney, well, not Mahoney, Prime Minister of the Alliance, which means that uh, he's in charge of a group of people that hate the Empire and the Federation even more than they hate each other. Kind of the old um, League of Non-Aligned Worlds, if you uh, look at Babylon 5. A bunch of people that really, really despise each other, but they despise everybody else a whole lot more. Uh, he gets the... the It's either the Retributor or the Retribution. Uh, depends on where you, where you look it up. And it's a small beam laser, which causes enhanced heat damage. Again, you can get that with lots of other beam lasers. And that, I believe, has been nerfed along with everything else for the uh, old heat meta game. So, you know. So that's the rundown of the powers, their personalities, some of what they offer, and a little bit of what you need to get into, you know, how you got to buy in and how you're basically paying them. Again, not a big fan of power play, but it's there and some people do like it. So, you know, take it, take it as it is. Um, if that actually interest you in interested you in power play, then wow. I, um, wow. Anyway, next time I will show how to influence or try to influence the background simulation so you can start your own power and not have to deal with these chuckleheads at all. Take care, fly safe, and I will see all of you out there in the black. Take care, everybody.